Welcome to the Bread of Life broadcast. We pray today's teaching blesses you, inspires you, encourages you, and equips you to become a carrier of the bread of life for a dying and sin sick world. God bless. He replied, because you have so little faith, truly I tell you, if you have faith as small as a mustard seed, you can say to this mountain, move from here to there, and it will move. Nothing will be impossible for you. Have you ever been in a place in your life where no one could help you? How did faith play a part? You all can uh, raise your hands, put your answers in a comment, or unmute your mic. Your question is, have we ever been in a circumstance of, um, can you repeat, repeat the question one more time? I'm sorry. No, no, you're good. Thank you for okay. um, asking. Uh -huh. Have you ever been in a place in your life where no one could help you, where you needed that little seed of faith? You know, you needed to move a mountain and you had to apply your faith to play a part. Yeah, yeah. Actually, we just went through that. Um, I have a mom that's been sick in the hospital. Um, they said she had, had an emergency surgery last week and they said that she wasn't going to make it. Just Monday again, they said uh, she had septicemia or something, and, which is a poison of the bloodstream. And I have faith and I, I have a prayer line and I pray all the time. And, you know, the, you know we just kept praying and praying and praying. And um, one of the sisters from church called and she started praying. It's, you know, my faith, I needed more encouragement. My, my mom, you know, at that time, you know, we were just, you know, she was weak because she was in pain and sick and was told, you know, she had septicemia, you know, to get checked out. So as we were sitting there uh, yesterday, the, the sister called me. I was on my way to the rehab because my mother just got transferred from the emergency room to the rehab. And she just started praying for my mother's strength, praying for me as a caretaker 24 hours. And at the time when she was praying for my mom, my mom was sitting in the emergency room. She felt the power in the anointing at the emergency room. And my mother, as soon as we hung up, my mother called crying. She said, I don't know what just happened, but I just feel the anointing all over me and the power of God. She said, I just feel like I'm at a new level. And we got the test results back, no, no septicemia. Three rehabs wanted her and she had to choose a rehab. We had been waiting since Saturday for a rehab. The insurance finally approved a rehab and I'm sitting in the car crying. I said, Lord, I didn't doubt you, but I didn't know you were gonna move right now. And I just thank the Lord because um, I'm, you know, that was like a faith builder and, you know, it moved me like, Lord, when we praying, God can do it right then and there. It's no time limit when God wants to do something. And I just want to say, I don't know if that encouraged somebody, but that, that encouraged me that, you know, to be praying in one place and it's, it's the spirit is moving in another place. And I just wanted to say that it was a faith builder for me. Wow. That is a powerful, powerful testimony. And I can never... <laughs> hear that enough amen thank god yes. for that thank you for sharing that too elise yes amen anybody else i i wanted to piggyback off of um not piggyback off of but just comment on what she said you know we were talking earlier and the erica had mentioned that faith is now and like she said when she prayed to god wow god i didn't know that you were going to do it now faith is now faith is as well happening action present what is right before us you know faith is walking through the fire faith is trusting him faith is being present faith is not just a word it's a verb amen to that thank you so much were you done sharing yes and um if anyone else has an icebreaker i can speak on um i can speak on it as well i'm just waiting to see if anyone else is going to comment okay um, anybody else? Okay. Um, to Rhonda, will you um, break this all the way down in the way that you wanted me to put it and then answer it, please? Oh, I'm sorry. Can you hear me? Yes, go ahead. Okay, so my example of Faith is, I'm sorry, I hear a noise. Okay, my example of faith is this. When I was 12 years old, I was diagnosed with cancer. Um, I had my family, like my immediate family, my extended family, 
my friends, everyone in the community, but those closest to me provided a cocoon around me, a cocoon of love. And when I would go get my chemo treatment at 12 years old, I began to realize that, hey, I got my dad, I got my mom, you know, I had my sisters, I had my brother, I had my grandmother, there's some times around me, they're praying for me, right? My dad has the finances to cover whatever I needed, right? But none of that mattered. None of it mattered. The only thing that could help me was me believing myself. It didn't matter what the circumstances around me was. I had to have faith and I had to know that God was real myself. You know, they can only provide the outside part but God can do the inside part. So faith is actually just believing in God and trusting that he can do the impossible, regardless of what you're surrounded by, no matter if it's good or bad, you have to do it yourself. Faith starts with you. Hey, Amen. thank you so much for sharing that. Faith starts with you believing. Oh my goodness. Um, anybody else wanna share? Yeah, I, I'd like to say something I was trying to share before and I inadvertently pushed the wrong button. Uh, but what I was, I was going to say uh, had already been referenced by, by a couple of, of, of the sisters. Faith is a verb. And, and the Lord actually showed me that uh, this uh, last year and into this year uh, with all that, that that's happened. I talked about a little bit last night uh, at, at Bible study um, about how the enemy seeks to come in the midst of you're going through to try to not allow you to see the fact that in the midst of you're going through, you're actually overcoming because overcoming is actually, you know, gaining wins in spite of whatever challenges you might face and losses you might gain. And, and the Lord showed me as I was writing a book on faith, you know, that that faith is a verb, you know, it truly is a verb and, and it's, it's, it's fully allowing God's intervention to help you achieve victory. So I can agree completely with what uh, the last uh, young lady said. You know, you have to realize you have to fully allow God to intervene in the situation. And that means you have to come to the end of yourself. And for me, I mean, this is for me is an everyday walk. I mean, planting and, and building a ministry. It's you come to, your, to the end of yourself so many different ways on any given day. Yet instead of throwing your hands up in exasperation and saying, forget about it. You, you fully allow God to intervene. It's like, God, I don't, I don't know what to do here. God, I don't have in my purview what I need, but I have you. And your word tells me that if when I pray, I believe and I doubt, I'll have whatsoever I say. So I'm asking you for thus and so. And when you stand on that and that trusting God and believing that he's going to intervene, God does intervene. And it's just so awesome to see him do that. So I, I really appreciate, you know, everything that everybody has said so far. Thank you so much for sharing, Pastor. Thank you so much. Anybody else? Mm. I was about to say, sometimes we get in the way. You know, when, Ad, when uh, Adam and Eve, um, when God made Eve, he put Adam to sleep because he didn't want Adam in the way. We have to let go and let God because sometimes we can, you know, God, you know, he, we, we can't do it, you know, the way God can do it. We have to believe, to have the faith. The substance of things hope for and evidence unseen, we have to believe that God is going to do it and get out the way and let him do it. That is also true. So powerful, all this word on just this one icebreaker. Thank you so much. Anybody else? Man. Well, I will give my testimony, two testimonies on how um, I was in a place where um, one with my marriage and the other with my daughter. I tell the testimony about that all the time, but um, no, there was no amount of encouraging words somebody can give me to give me out, to get me out of what I was going through. And it was only faith. It was only faith. And I had to believe that God was going to change the situation. I had to trust in God and believe God that he was going to turn it around for my good. And he did. And I'm so grateful for that. I'm so grateful for the word faith, for the, 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 just having faith that God has given us something, um, that all we have to do is believe and it can happen according to his will. So thank you all. So I'm sorry. I pressed mute too. So thank you all so much for sharing. Ephesians 6.16, KJV, above all, take the shield of faith 
wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery dots of the wicked. So today we're gonna define a shield. What is a shield? What is it used for? The shield is a piece of metal, right? When you go into, uh, when you go into battle, a shield is a metal or it's a material that protects you. Shields are used to intercept specific attacks. You know, a body shield, there's some shields that, you know, they cover up the body. They go like from your head, go down to like your knees or past your knees. A body shield can be used um, to actually push the enemy back up off you. So I want anybody, if you give another, want to give another example of what a shield is used for. Okay. A shield can be used to deflect something as well. Um, you know, it, it does protect and it mm -hmm. definitely does intercept, it stops things, but it can also be used to deflect and that's significant in, in the spirit realm because, you know, the enemy seeks to send fiery darts our way. And while the, the, the you know, the fiery darts can be quenched, in some cases they're deflected to be sent other directions to do damage uh, to the enemy. To the kingdom of darkness so mm -hmm. shields can deflect and many times particularly with light it can be refracted and deflected to do great things and it can be a source of power so the shield can be a source of power and we we're talking about faith faith is a source of power it's really our power source that that uh energizes us to do the work because we've, we've established that faith is a verb and the essence of that verb comes from the realization of who god is in relation to us so it can definitely be used to deflect. I love that. Thank you so much for sharing. Anybody else want to give an example of what a shield is used for? All right, moving right along. Okay. What is faith? All right, we all know this famous scripture, right? Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen, Hebrews 11 and 1. Hebrews 11 and 6 says, without faith, it's impossible to please God. We got to get that. We got to get that in our spirit. We got to get that in our mind, our soul, our body, and every being of us. Without faith, it's impossible, no matter what you do, no matter how you do it. Without faith, it's impossible to please God. The definition of the internet says faith is complete confidence in someone or something. Faith is believing in a God you can't see and some can't hear. The fact that you believe in air that you can't see is faith. Faith is believing without any doubt. In 2 Corinthians 5, 7, it says, but we walk by faith and not by sight. If we walk by faith, nothing is impossible. I mean, nothing. But when we walk by what we see, we are very limited. Why is God requiring us to have faith even during a spiritual battle? I want to pose that question to you all. Comment in the chat, unmute your mic, raise your hand. Why is God requiring us to have faith? Take on the shield of faith that you may uh, be able to quit all the fiery dots of the enemy. I would say that that you kind of answered it uh, as you were asking, uh, be, because of where God wants to take us, because of the dimensions that He wants to move us into. Um, when we when we begin to understand our perspective and who we are, we realize that in essence we're, we're, we're hosts for God and all that we do. We were created to worship Him. We were created to to give Him glory to be a reflection of him in the earth. And when we exercise our faith, we're in essence becoming a whole spiritually saying, God, because I believe and trust you, I understand that in and of myself, I can't do this. But because of where you desire to go and because you and your sovereign will chose to use me in this instance, I'm surrendering myself to you so that you can use me however you choose to use me to get me from here to there, wherever there might be. A uh, practical definition of faith that I learned is that faith is coming to the end of yourself. And that means coming to the end of your own resources, the end of your own strength, the end of your own understanding, the end of your own logic and reasoning, just getting to the point where you've hit the wall at every level. Yet God is telling you to keep on going through the wall, not over it, but through it. And while you're trying to figure out how to get through it, as we trust God, he just takes us through it 
And we don't realize that we're going through it until we get on the other side of it. So I would say it, it, it requires us to have faith because in the midst of the spiritual battles where we're going, God needs and wants to take us into realms in prayer and into realms in healing and deliverance and words of knowledge and all the spiritual dynamics that we were created to function in. He wants to take us to places that our logic will keep us out of because it won't make sense to us. But if we trust him and we remember that all things are possible in him, that's when he can use us. It gets us, like one of our sisters said earlier, it gets us out of the way so that God can identify and link up with God that's in us to do what he wants to do. Amen. Thank you for sharing that. Absolutely. To take us places that we can't take ourselves in the natural to fight battles that we can't see. Anybody else want to speak on that? I think you covered everything, but I will still pose the question. Anybody else? Hey. Hey. Um, I wanted to speak on that. Go ahead. And piggyback off of what Pastor said. Um, one of the things I've heard before in ministry is that faith is the umbilical cord that connects us to God. Mm. Without faith, we have no connection to God. So faith is the umbilical cord that connects us to God, which is our source. If y'all know what the umbilical cord is, it's the, it's the cord that connects the mother to the child, the mother's placenta to the child. And that's where the child gets all of this nutrients and its source of life from that. So and without the umbilical cord, the child will lose its oxygen. So faith is our lifeline. It is the umbilical cord. Without faith, it's impossible. You cannot say you believe in God and not have faith. Faith is belief in God. Mm. Girl, thank you so much for sharing that. Anybody else want to speak on that? Anybody want to read Peter Walked on Water? Anybody want to help me out tonight with reading? I, I, I will. I'll just leave it in the chat. I will. Um, Peter replied, command me to come to you on the water. Come, said Jesus. Then Peter got down out of the boat, walked on the water, and came toward Jesus. But when he saw the strength of the wind, he was afraid, and beginning to sink, he cried out, Lord, save me. Immediately, Jesus reached out his hand and took hold of Peter. You of little faith, he said. Why did you doubt? Focus on Jesus and not the water. Uh, his natural eye caused him to doubt. Peter could have swim. Fear came in. The question is, have you ever been in a situation where you had to trust God and you doubted? Excellent question. Hmm. Your phone breaking up, babe. Thank you so much, Pastor, for reading. I'm sorry, go ahead. Can you hear me now? I can kind of hear you, yep. Okay, hold on. Let me see. What about now? Okay, I hear you. Okay. Um, I had, uh, like, but you had to trust God and you doubt it. Um, there was just, okay, oh my God, here's one. There's, so, there's been so many times. Um, and if y'all have ever heard of the saying that he's an on-time God, I can testify to it. It's just that sometimes having faith requires you to do like Peter, is to step out the boat into the water, to take a walk in the impossible, to step into the unknown. But if you have your eyes on Jesus, you won't be like Peter and think you will be able to stand up and keep on going. So for me, um, one of the situations that I was in is I had just got in a car accident and I had started a new job and the job required me to have a car, right? So I had to go through training and I said, okay, well, by the time training is over with, I have saved enough to go pay a down payment for a car, right? So I'm catching Ubers to work and then here it goes. It was working out for me, but it was uncomfortable because, you know, who wants to be in that position? But I kept seeing it through. I kept trusting God. And then sometime in training, they would say, hey, we got a field day, which means you needed a car to go out in the field. 
And on those days, it was like my flesh would be like, oh, my God. What am I going to do? But I can promise y'all every single time one of my coworkers or one of my peers have always said, hey, let's partner up. And God made a way every single time. And just when it came time for me to finish training, I got my car. I was able to do it. But it was while I was going through, like I had so many reasons to quit my job. It felt so uncomfortable to be in lack. It felt so uncomfortable to know, like, if I'm going to show up today and if I get dropped off here today, will I have to go in the field? And if I have to go in the field, how? How, how am I going to be able to do it? Because, you know, I'm a strong person. I speak, I'm friendly, but, you know, you don't ask for help. So it's like, God, you got to get me through this. The whole while I have been praying and trusting and praying. And this was the first situation that I had been in to where my flesh was so conflicted, right? To where I was crying. I was crying because it was so uncomfortable. But I promise I had the biggest smile on my face. And I was talking to my cousin about the situation and I said, I'm crying because it don't feel good to my flesh. You see, I'm crying because it don't feel good to me because it's so uncomfortable. But I am smiling because I trust God beyond anything I see. I trust God. I know that I know that I know that God is real. And I kept trusting him and through it. And that's what I had. That's one of the situations that I had been in where it looked like it wasn't going to work out where it was so uncomfortable sometimes, but God always provided a ram in the bush. As long as I kept my eye on him and not the water, I was able to keep going forward. And I didn't sink, and I'm so grateful for it. Mm -mm. And I'm so grateful for it for you. Oh, my goodness. Thank you so much for sharing that powerful testimony. Anybody else been in a situation where you had to trust God and you doubt it? Let's just give it up for Peter, y'all, for stepping out on the boat. It was other people on that boat. They didn't want to step out on that boat. His faith, I'm going to go out here. But then when you get out in that water, how many of us got out the boat? we like, okay, God, God said you do something. Okay, God, I'm going to do it. And you go do it. And then the next instruction, you like, wait a minute, what am I doing out here? What am I doing? I said, we're going to start these workshops. Okay, cool. I'm going to start the workshop. The first week, I'm, I'm, I'm. What am I teaching? I don't really, I don't know about this. I got to say, you know, all these doubts start to play in our minds. Anybody else ever had to trust God and you doubt it in the midst of it? He was in the water when he doubted. He heard the winds. You ever hear, start listening to people and you start doubting what God told you? Because people will come and tell you something against what God said. Go ahead. Yeah, I want to speak on that. I did, um, personally, I did. Uh, with a relationship that God um, told me from the beginning that I wasn't supposed to be in. And when I tell you, I went through 11 years worth of turmoil in that relationship and um, misery, depression, and just losing myself. Um, and God was giving me signs year after year, year after year, just, and I knew it and I knew it, but I wasn't obedient, obedient and I didn't, I wasn't trusting God. I just like, oh no, I I feel empty with with if I let him go and you know he pay half the rent and do this. So yeah, but after I let that situation go, man, it, it's it's just everything been different for me and better. And it's get, getting it's getting better also. Hey man, thank you so much for sharing that. I, 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 I'd like to piggyback off that if I can. Um, Go ahead. Because that, 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 that anecdote kind of speaks to something that, that uh, you put here on the slide. Uh, Peter could have swim. You're right. You know, he absolutely could have swim. Um, sometimes situations happen when we doubt that put us in positions to um, allow God to help us realize what God already knows. And that's that we already know how to swim. We, we, we know how to swim. You know, we know how to swim spiritually. We know how to swim because the word lets us know to lean not to our own understanding, but in all of our ways, acknowledge him and, and he'll direct our path. You know, as we allow God to be God and as we allow him to take the position that he desires to take in our lives and to sit on the thrones of our hearts, 
you know, we begin to find ourselves swimming in situations where we just knew we'd sink. And I think about that and just realize just how awesome God is. God, even when when I failed you, you never failed me. You know, that in and of itself is reason enough to give God praise every day. And, and that is motivation, you know, for me to give God praise every day and to give God beyond my best, you know, and, and, and that that's the key. And the, the, the thing that I said earlier about faith, I actually learned it from uh, hearing somebody uh, talk about uh, working out, talk about exercising, that gains don't happen until in, in weightlifting and exercise, gains don't happen until you've reached the end of yourself. You can get on the bench and, and crank out, you know, five sets of, of, of 10 of like 200 plus pounds. You're not working out. You're, getting, you're not working out for gains. You're working out to exercise what you have. If you want to gain, you've got to get to the point where once you can't go anymore, that's when, you know, the the in your mind, you should say, OK, now the workout begins. And when he told me that he told me that at a time where I was really wrestling spiritually with a variety of things, with starting the ministry, with being at a spiritual crossroads in my own life. And I just got to the point of being exasperated. But I, it, the Lord brought back to my members what that individual said. When you get to your end. You know, and I'd gotten to my end. My my faith, it, it, my my faith as I understood it, ran out. And, and every scripture that I knew, I'd said to myself, and I'd encouraged myself. I had nothing left to encourage myself with. And when I just got to the point, just being exasperated, I I couldn't even really pray anymore. I'm like, Lord, what? That's really all I can say about prayer. Lord, what? What do I do now? And I, in, in my spirit, I heard him say, Now we can begin. Now the gains can start because you've gotten out of the way. And God puts us in in situations where we feel like we're drowning because it's a representation of the realization that he needs us at our point where we have nothing else left to give, that he can begin to make the gains in us in faith by teaching us how to walk and move by faith. Pastor, are you finished? I am. Yes, I am. Because I want to piggyback off you. The Lord, is, the Holy Spirit is definitely moving tonight um, in connection with almost everything that you and the lady before the young lady before you had said. Um, okay, first of all, when you said you, you got the, what, the thing from when you, the Lord spoke to you when the guy was talking to you about working out. Um, what I have learned is that faith is a muscle. And the more you exercise it, the stronger it gets. So you get your gains, you get your gains, the more you exercise walking in faith, you're building muscle, you're building muscle. And years ago, the Lord told me that once you get to the end of you, you get to the beginning of God. That's when we get to the, when we get to the end of our self efforts of trying to figure it out, of trying to make it work, of trying to make it make sense by what we feel it should be, by what we feel we are called should be to be, by who we feel we are, you know, called to be. We when we get to the end of trying to just hold that together and we just release it all, we get to the beginning of God. And the Erica isn't here, but earlier she told Sabina and I about the swimming and the walking thing. Hallelujah. And I was I was saying how I was going to put this in there, but you guys brought it up. She said something so powerful that swimming is our effort jesus didn't tell him to swim because he know that if he could swim already that's something that we do on our own jesus knew that but he told him to do the impossible which is step out the boat and walk on faith walk i mean step out the boat on faith and walk on water he didn't tell him to come to him on his way on how you know by swimming he told him just to come out Trust me, look at me. I am the God of the impossible. It doesn't matter what you're surrounded by. I'm going to do a new thing. You know the only way that you can get through water is by swimming, but I'm going to show you a new way. Look at me. I'm going to redefine. I'm going to redefine what is possible and what is not possible because I'm going to help you walk on this water without sinking if you keep your eye on me and do not move you you will not be sunk hallelujah and tavina is back over to you thank you so much for sharing that powerful word both of y'all thank you so much kim i saw your hand raised i forgot what i was going to say that's why i lowered it oh okay if it come back no matter where we are interrupt us okay gotcha all right 
Anybody else have, have you ever been in a situation where you had to trust God and you doubt it? Yes, I'm, now I remember what I was going to say. Um, I can remember back in 2004, I had just graduated from um, the University of Central Florida. And I went back home. My cousin was pregnant. She couldn't come to my graduation because she was about to go into labor. When I got back home, um, I went, dropped my stuff off in Tallahassee, and I immediately went to Thomasville where she was. And I can remember when she had him, there was something wrong with him. And the doctors and nurses did not know that I was her cousin. And they were around the corner. And they said, I don't think that he's going to make it. That's a very sick baby. It broke my heart because that's my cousin's first child. Um, she was, she's my first cousin. That's her first child. And I went to her. I said, Christy, I, I don't understand what, what you're going to do. And she said, Kim, that's the Lord's child. Well, I went to, they immediately flew him to Gainesville here at the Shands Hospital for the babies and stuff. And me and my grandmother, because she couldn't go because she had a C-section. So me and my grandmother had to go to Shands and we had to stay in the Ronald McDonald house and all this kind of stuff. And I had to tell the Lord, I said, Lord, I believe I was like the, the gentleman in the Bible whose uh, son, I think it was son was sick, was dying. And he said, Lord, I believe, but help my unbelief. And I think that God has put us, put me, especially. I've been in those type of situations, not just with my cousin's son, but with my own son. Lord, I know that you're going to heal my baby, but I'm having just a little bit of doubts on it about it so i've been put in those type of um, position and it's not it's never anything that's um has to do with my life but it's always about something somebody that i love one of my my son my friend's uh son my cousin's son is always something else so and at this point that you made on the screen really stuck out to me where it says Peter could have swim, but see, if Peter was anything about me, I would have been like, look, I'm with Jesus. You want me, one of his disciples to get in the water? Oh no, you must not know the God I serve. But that, that's all I wanted to say about that, that particular point. I really like this, these, this particular script um, slide that you have. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, that was a Bible study me and Dierica said, had. I, I don't know why the Holy Spirit had me call her up. And I said, tell me some about Peter in the water. Let's talk about it. I don't know why I was led. And she just started going in about how he could have swam. She just and it, I was like, OK, I'm going to put it. <laughs> so thank you so much for actually sharing that. Thank you all for this powerful. I was I was a little nervous tonight, y'all, but y'all are bringing it. The Holy Spirit is moving. Thank you so much, everybody. The shield of faith keep us from sinking. All right. All right, speak on it. I know somebody got something to say about this. The three Hebrew boys. I ain't even gonna bring up the, the uh, scripture or anything. Based on what you know about that, where did you see the shill of faith in this story? They're about the Ki three Hebrew boys. Kiara, didn't you speak on this Monday? I'm coming on. I'm driving, so I had to fix my phone. <laughs> oh, so yeah, shout I'm coming, baby. Release it, yes. Can you hear me okay? Yes, ma'am. Perfect. Yeah, so what I, God, had, God put that on my heart to, to study um, earlier in the week. And what I shared, I think it was what, yesterday? Um, is that, you know, God wants us to go in the fire. In the world, we are conditioned or, you know, kind of trained to know that fire is bad. Fire is going to burn you. Stay away from it. It's going to hurt you. But the Lord wants us to go into the fire because that's where our faith is. That's where he's with us. And with the three Hebrew boys, they didn't care if they were going to burn 
or, or whatever the case may have been, but they had faith that Jesus and God would be with them. And so they went in with no doubts. They just went in knowing that we're standing up for our faith and what we believe in and whatever happens, happens. Mm, thank you so much for sharing that. Yes, standing on your faith. Anybody else want to talk about that? Well, the, the thing about the three Hebrew boys, and, and to be back off of what she said is good, is because we are conditioned to think fire is bad, but fire the heart, the fire of the Holy Ghost, right? And what the fire of the Holy Ghost sometimes. Um, and what responds me it will make you better it will write on you can you hear me it's going in and out i can hear you uh -oh. but I, I have to really focus this one in and out. It's it's about like on the water i'm driving i'm sorry okay go ahead i think i think it should be fine go ahead what about now yeah. Now sounds better? Yes, right. it does. Okay. So fire, it refines you or and it burns off. When fire is refining you and you're walking through the fire with faith and with God, that's what that's when the fire will refine you and make you better. It will the Holy Spirit will protect you so you won't be burnt. But sometimes something's got to be burnt off you. Sometimes you got to feel the fire. But with the three Hebrew boys is the story behind that is that their faith they told the king that like she said we refuse to back bow down we know that god can do it and if he don't do it then that that's still okay we know without a doubt that he can do it and if he don't do it it's still okay because we still know that our god can do it like they had their faith and their faith allowed them to be protected by an angel when they walked through the fire they believed, they went in the fire knowing that they were supposed to be burnt alive. But because they believed and they had faith, God provided an angel that will walk through it with them to protect them. And when they came out, the thing that got me about this story, y'all, is that when they came out, the scripture said they didn't smell like fire, nor did they look like it. So you mean to tell me they walked through the furnace when it turned up to the maximum temperature and they walked out on touch, that is the power of God. Mm. That is faith in action. That is the Bible say faith without works is dead. And that is faith with works. Back to you. Thank you, ma'am, so much for sharing. I just noticed guys that my husband is on here. Shout out to you, husband. Thank you for joining in on tonight. Yes, you are so right. You guys are so powerful in this. Oh my goodness. The three Hebrew boys. Pastor, did you want to speak on this? You, you, you know I can. I'll, ju I'll just say this. Um, <laughs> three, three is a number of empowerment. So the fact that God had the three Hebrew boys going in uh, was designed to be empowering not only to, to one another but empowering to the whole situation because they went in i believe with a sense of knowing that god was going to deliver them uh it says in the word that, that the fire was turned up seven times hotter seven is number of completion so god made sure by man's so-called intelligence to show the, the ignorance of man that even though you're trying to do this thing to try to destroy i'm going to have complete dominion in this and when you take seven and three, that, that makes the number 10. And, and, and 10 is a number uh, of, of complete dominion. So what happened here is that God took the faith and the answer to the question, faith was involved in the whole thing from start to finish. Faith, again, is the substance of things hoped for and it's the evidence of things not seen. These three men went into this, okay, with a belief that God was going to bring them out. In fact, like you did earlier, they professed it, you know, the the the. You know, King said that this is what you're going to do. And they said, we ain't got to hesitate in answering this because we know who God is, is our paraphrase. And the same God that brought us through all the stuff he's brought us through to this point is going to bring us through this. And if he wants to save us, he'll save us. But just understand, if by chance he chooses not to, it's not because he can't. It's because it's his will. And what that was was a demonstration of the realization that they understood that 
God, that they understood that they had to get out of the way and allow God to fully intervene. Okay, they had they were faithing it at that point. And someone said earlier, and it's true, faith is a verb. They were faithing it at that point. So all the false evidence that appeared real or the fear that could have been there in the form of the fire, in the form of the ridicule, in the form of all the stuff, it, even in the form of the ones that got burned up that were taking them there. Because if you remember, if you remember the story, with the furnace being turned up seven times hotter, the ones that were taking them down there to put them in the fire got burned up. So we talk about Peter could have swam, the Hebrew boys could have ran. Mm -hmm. But they didn't. Why? Because they were fully allowing God's intervention to help them achieve victory because the atmosphere was conducive for the empowerment that God had put upon them to completely dominate in that situation so that not only did they come out not smelling like smoke, but everybody knew that the God that they served was God. And that's why faith is so important. When we exercise our faith and we get the gains, you know, it works in the natural. Man, you've been working out? People notice it. You've been, you, you, you've been working out? Wow. Yeah, yeah, I have. And many times we don't think it's a big deal, but the little things that we do and the consistency in doing these things, that's the key. And that's what God is looking for, us to be consistent in having that mindset of knowing that God's got us no matter what. Thank you so much for sharing that. Thank you. Powerful word. I, 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 believe, I believe Sister Kim has her hand up also. Oh, go ahead, Sister Kim. I didn't see your hand up, baby. So I wanted to, when you say the three Hebrew boys, I wanted to remind you that they their faith story started before chapter three. If we go back to chapter one, we remember they were with Daniel when mm -hmm. the king was trying to tell them to eat the meat. And they kept uh -huh. saying, no, we're not going to do that. Mm -hmm. And so their faith journey started there, actually. So I don't know why the king thought that he was going to try. Well, I know why. OK, I couldn't get them this way. So let me put one of them in the fire furnace. Let me put one of them in the lion's den. But he doesn't remember. If he remember back what they said, even if he doesn't, I know that he's able. So their, their, their shield of faith was put into action before um, they even went to the, the, the fiery furnace. Hmm. Amen. Thank you so much for sharing that. Absolutely. I do remember that. They was not going. They did not bow. They did not bow. Faith scriptures to apply. Thank you so much, Pastor, for letting me know that. I'm trying to read the, okay. Faith scriptures to, um, to apply. So faith come by hearing and hearing through the word of Christ, the word of God. I'll be getting these other translations, y'all. I'm a um, KJV Um <laughs> but I do be trying to get these scriptures breaking down. First Corinthians two and five, that your faith might not rest in the wisdom of man, but in the power of God. Anyone wants to add any faith scripture, any faith scripture that you live by, any faith scripture that you re recite when you're going through something, when you need to, um, when you need God to work on your behalf and you want to confess something, any other faith scriptures? Mine is Proverbs 3, 5 to 7. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. Acknowledge his will and all you do, he will direct your path. On, so we just trust in him, just believe in him. Yep, absolutely. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me, who gives me strength. Anybody else? I think that's Philippians Psalm 417. Peace. Be still and know that I am God. Come on now. Thank you, Kiki. Anybody else? Yeah. Any faith scriptures you apply to your life? We have to apply scriptures. We got to apply the word of God. It's living and it's true. We have to apply it. Anybody have a scripture they apply? Sometimes I be have to recite that like daily, sometimes all the time, because when you're going through and you be like, God, how I'm gonna do it and I need you and, and I just be have to just you know continue to just recite that and even some more scriptures too but that, that's my main one so mm -hmm. yeah thank you 
mine is uh, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. For me, okay. emphasis on all things. All things. Yes. Thank you for sharing that. What is a fiery dart? Okay. Um, anybody want to read? That's a Okay, the word quench in this verse in the Greek means to quench by dousing or to extinguish by drowning in water. It refers to the water soaked shield of, in Rome, of Roman soldiers. You see, before Roman soldiers went out to the battle, they purposely soaked their shields in water until they were completely water saturated. The soldiers did this because they knew that the enemy would be shooting fire, bearing arrows in their direction. If a shield was dry, it was possible for it to be set on fire when struck. But in this vital piece of armor was water soaked. The flames would extinguish even an arrow penetrated its heavenly, heaven, heaven, heavily saturated surface. How does this apply to us as believers? Well, Romans 10, 17 says that our faith is increased by hearing the word of God. In Ephesians 5, 26, the word of God is likened to water. So as we regularly submit ourselves to the word of God, we soak our faith with the word just as Roman soldiers soak their shields with water. And when our faith becomes water saturated or word soaked, it becomes just like the soldiers water saturated shield. And my little tongue's had over here. In other words, it will be so heavily inundated with the water of God's word that even if a fiery dart pierces our shield, that the huge amount of the word in us will extinguish the flames and put out a potentially damaging situation. Anybody want to speak on that before we go to the next slide? All right, Ephesians 6, 16, taking... The shield of faith, wherewith we sh ye shall be able to quench all the fiery dots of the enemy. What can be an example of a fiery dot dart in your life? Anger could be one. Really, any emotion: anger, fear, yeah. uh -huh. uh, lust, doubt, sadness. In, in, any emotion could could yeah. be a, a fiery dart. Okay. Give an example of the way you use the shield of faith to quench the fiery darts. One way is when the enemy is speaking lies to you. Um, my pastor calls it the whispering spirit. And that's when the enemy speaks lies to you, telling you you can't do this or things won't get better. The way that you react and the way that you use faith um, in, re in response to that. And like the pastor said earlier, I've never heard of the shield of faith being used as a deflector, but that's a good one. Who is messing up too? And so you, you deflect instead of speaking your big scripture even though he's telling you the it's breaking up i think it's fixing go ahead okay so anytime the enemy is talking to your mind um you have to just speak speak life speak scripture don't give into what he's telling you don't give into what he's feeling there will be some times where You know, you want. Yes, yeah, messing up again. Just allow that little mustard seed. Uh -huh. Okay. That little mustard seed. Oh, I want you to release this word. You might have to put it in a comment, darling. It's messing up real bad. Over the yeah, so Vina, try muting her and then unmute. Yeah. Okay. Take over the situation. Oh. Okay. I got you. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you so much for sharing. I was the I'm, I'm the host on another device and when I, I couldn't get it fast enough. Thank you. 
All right. Um, anybody else? It was give an example of the way you use the shield of faith to quench the fiery dark. Okay, so there's some faith scriptures we can use against fiery darts. Um, with with uh, when I was dealing with some with my with my child, I will keep bringing this up because it's the last. Um, it was the last really big uh, spiritual battle I was in. I had to um, whom the sun set free is free indeed. I had to keep confessing that scripture, um, even with in my marriage. Um, I had to keep confessing. This is a God ordained marriage. This is a God ordained. And I have to still confess because the enemy hates marriage. He's after, he's always going to be after your marriage. And so I have to keep confessing. This is a God ordained marriage. God, this is what you gave me. And so the, the, to, to fight against the fiery darts, I have to stand on scriptures. I have to stand on God's promise. I have to stand on his word that this is ordained by God that whom the sun set free is free indeed that you will withhold no good thing from me, that um, deliverance is the children bread. I have to stand on different scriptures. So I place some scriptures up here um, for rejection. Anybody dealing with rejection? Um, First Peter 2 and 4, as you come to him, a living stone rejected by man, but in the sight of God, you're chosen and you're precious. Loneliness, Psalms 34 and 18, the Lord is near to the brokenhearted and save the Christian spirit. Um, God has forgotten you. Luke 12, 6 to 7. Are not five sparrows sold for two pennies? Are not one of them is forgotten before God? Why? Even the hairs on your head are all numbered. Fear not. You are more valuable. You are more, more valued than any sparrow. Um, and another one, we believe sometimes we're not enough. We're not good enough. We're not qualified. Who are we to be doing something like this? And first Peter two and nine, but you are chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for his own possession, that you may proclaim the excellency of him who called you out of darkness into the marvelous light. So when we, when we have to use the shield of faith and believing without a shadow of a doubt, when things come up in our lives, when things come up in our mind, because the enemy will attack us, especially when God put you on assignment, when God told you to do something and we have to, and he will bring in fear and making you feel like you're not qualified. And we have to have that shield of faith, those faith scriptures. We have to believe this is what God told me to do. This is what I'm going to do. If God told me to come out into that water, he's not going to leave me. He's not going to forsake me. I'm not going to drown out here. I'm not going to die. I'm going to do God's will. And sometimes even if you do that, I'm in God's will. I'm in the will of God. And so I just want to encourage everybody as we are learning about taking on the shield of faith that you may be, that you may quench the fiery dots. That enemy is throwing fiery dots all day long in our mind, in our marriage, in our families, in our children, on our jobs. And we have to have faith. I'm on assignment. So, and I was just on assignment at my job and the enemy, and, and don't nobody really know, but the enemy was throwing some fiery dots even with the people I was working with. And I had to pray again. I was like, uh-uh. No, 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 no. And I had to start using the shield of faith. God, I know what you call me to. And I know what I'm going to do here. And I know what I'm supposed to God, And I didn't know the whole, I didn't know why all he called me, but I know I was on assignment. And I started um, defeating that enemy. I started letting them know you are defeated. You are, you are, um, I am victorious in this battle. I will pass this test. And y'all, I am done. I had done well. And God is um, proud. He's happy. And uh, he gave me that um, encouraging word. So anybody else want to talk about faith scriptures or how do we stand against any fiery dots? I know that was a little long-winded. That's it. All right. So I encourage you all that when the enemy throw the fiery darts that you use your shield of faith, we are putting on this armor of God. And I expect everybody to walk in it. God is not preparing us for nothing. We just, we're not just doing this just because God is getting us prepared for something and to teach others about it. So um, find your scripture if you're dealing with anything and stand on it. 
Thank you all for joining our virtual workshop. Yes, thank you so much, everybody who tuned in tonight. Thank you so much for answering questions. Thank you so much for sharing your testimony. Join us next Wednesday at 7 p.m. Central Standard Time as we discuss the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Here is all the handles for Living Witness Ministry. Um, I'm, I'm so honored to be a part of this ministry. This is my pastor, Derek Thomas. You can take a screenshot of the screen and follow him on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat. This man is on everything, you guys. TikTok, um, he got his own streaming TV channel, um, podcast, and he's actually asked if, if there's any um, ministry that if you want to you know, host something on his platform, Let's send them something and let them see what you're working with. And you can possibly be on the channel. I'm sorry for saying that, Pastor, if you didn't give me permission. He ain't gave me permission to say that, but <laughs> I know he's open to it. And um, also make sure that you, um, uh, on Clubhouse, he's also on Clubhouse too. So, Pastor, thank you so much for allowing me to be on. I'll turn it back over to you. You're very welcome. And, and absolutely, we, we don't hold, none of us hold a monopoly on the gospel. We're all one big family. and. Whatever we have to share, we, we come together and we share. And, and we thank and praise God for, for every gift. And we thank and praise God for um, every individual that God is opting to use the gifts through. Uh, thank you for yet another fantastic lesson. Uh, we're going higher and higher and we're, we're getting an education. Living Witness Ministries is a church on the move dedicated to sharing the good news of Jesus Christ through the preached and taught word, community activism and outreach, and practical ministry designed to meet needs, bless hearts, save souls, and change lives. You can sow into the ministry via our cash app at dollar sign LW Ministries 2020. That's dollar sign LW Ministries 2020. Sow your seed into the good works and good ground of Living Witness Ministries today. And thank you for helping us reach the world with the life giving way. We pray that you were blessed by today's broadcast and would love to hear from you. If you have any prayer requests, praise reports, or would like to learn more about Living Witness Ministries, you can contact us by email at livingtowitness at gmail.com. That's the word living, the number two, witness at gmail.com or by phone at area code 404 955-8846. Again, that's area code 404-955-8846. Until next time, we encourage you to continue to live your life as a living witness.